Oh, I can definitely hit this ball. Let me just... Oh, oh, okay. This time, that ball is mine. Or maybe not. 100% I've got it this time. Maybe this time. This time. Maybe this time. Sound familiar? Sounds to me like you need a little bit of help in the aerial car control department. Hi. If you're new here, I'm Oliver. I'm a fairly new Rocket League content creator on YouTube. My videos on Rocket League vary from your run-of-the-mill Rhodes Grand Champ series to tutorials on all your favourite mechanics. So if you're interested, make sure to click that big red subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of my uploads, no matter what the subject of the video may be. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about aerial car control. The difference between having excellent and poor aerial car control, I would honestly say is the difference between High Platinum and Grand Champion. I know that's a bold statement and there's more to Rocket League than just aerials, but it's a massive part of it when it comes to high level gameplay. So first of all, I want to talk about the difference between slow and fast aerials. This is very easy to explain as a slow aerial is when you use one jump to pop your car into the air and start boosting to gain altitude. And the other is using a double jump for the same purpose, but a lot faster. Using a double jump creates more upwards momentum for your car. So when you start boosting upwards, you're going a lot faster without the aid of using extra boost. Now this doesn't automatically mean that fast aerials are superior, as using a slower aerial means that you still have the option to flip after you've initially jumped, whereas fast aerials don't have that luxury. A scenario where you'd typically use a slower aerial might be if you're in defense and an opponent takes a shot on goal. You would use your first jump and boost to get into the air. You would then have the option to flip into the ball to make that save more convincing if necessary. An example of a fast aerial situation could be one of those situations where the ball gets sent straight up into the air at a speed where it doesn't quite hit the ceiling but sort of floats there for a second or two. This would be the perfect time to use your fast aerial so that you can be first to the ball and dictate where you want the ball to go. For example, you could pass it down to a teammate or if you're insane at the game you can pull off a nutty double tap or anything you feel is necessary. Just to summarise these two types of aerials can be used in a lot of different ways all over the field, but there are certain situations where one is better than the other. This next part is also another very important factor when it comes to actually controlling your car in the air, and that is using air roll. If you didn't know already, air roll is split up into two parts, regular air roll and air roll left and right. To put this briefly, regular air roll is where you hold down your air roll button and use your analog stick to control which way your car air rolls. And air roll left and right is where your button where this is bound to air rolls either left or right for you without the use of your analog stick. Now because this video is about aerial car control, I'm just going to say that air roll left and right is way more beneficial to use rather than regular air roll. This is because whilst using air roll left for example, you can now use your analog stick to tornado spin which allows you to change direction in midair at a much faster pace rather than just pitching to the left or to the right. I know this may sound a little confusing at first, but here's a little exercise you can do to get used to it. If you happen to play Rocket League on PC, you can download a huge range of workshop maps that are designed to help you hone your aerial car control, such as Lethemir's ring maps. However, if you don't happen to play on PC, you can just either hop into free play to test your skills out there, or if you want something a little more challenging with obstacles, then you can hop into a private match, turn on unlimited boost, change the map to pillars, and try to aerial around the pillars whilst changing direction with your newly found air roll right or left. Oh, by the way, the difference between air roll right and left is completely down to personal preference. I personally use air roll left because that's the one I picked at random and continue to use to this day. Okay, this next part is just as important as any other. I watched some lower level replays before recording this video and the most common mistake I see when people completely whiff an aerial is because they didn't even need to in the first place. That's right. A lot of the time in Rocket League an aerial isn't the best option for you. If the ball is say 10 feet above you and you've got no pressure on you whatsoever, don't aerial. Just be patient, control the ball and then decide on your next play. Unnecessary aerials can cost you and your teammates massively in games, especially if you miss the aerial completely. So my advice for decision making would be this. Make sure you know where your teammate is, so that you can either make a pass or simply not go for an aerial if your teammate is in a dodgy place. Know what you want to do with said aerial and what you hope to gain from it. For example, a pass to a teammate or a goal. Do you have enough boost for an aerial? And not for just the aerial itself, but maybe for a recovery if it goes wrong. And finally, is it necessary? Because you don't want to just needlessly waste possession just because you can hit the ball in the air. Now I know what people are going to say. I did what you told me and I still keep missing my aerials. I keep going under or over the ball completely. Aha! You've brought me to my next point. Timing your aerials well is essential for making contact with the ball in the right place. 
and also if you want to beat your opponent to the ball or even beat them in a 50-50. Another common mistake in the lower ranks is jumping for the ball either way too early or way too late. This also ties in with your decision making as you need to decide if you want to go for the ball and your timing dictates when you're going to do so. If you jump for an aerial way too early, you're most likely going to waste most, if not all of your boost trying to reach the ball. And this is good for no one, other than your opponents. And if you jump for the ball too late, well, you don't really need me to tell you what's going to happen. Waiting just a fraction of a second to get your car in the right position for an aerial is a lot more beneficial than just chucking yourself at the ball, hoping it's going to go where you want it to. So that covers all the advice I have to give on aerial car control. I know there were quite a few points made in this video, but if you're a little confused, don't be shy to ask a question down in the comments. I reply to absolutely every single one of my comments, so I'd be more than happy to help you out. Also, if this video helped you into getting a little more insight into aerial car control and you've made progress because of it, that's awesome. I'm glad I could help. With that being said though, that is all I've got time for today, guys. So I've been Oliver, that is O-L-V-R, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.